Takahiro Shiraishi was found guilty for the murder of nine people and was given the death sentence. Just typing serial killer in the Google search bar will result in numerous news articles. Takahiro's case is very distinct from other cases. The procedure to find and bait his victims is certainly very odd and works for the most part because of the especially high rates of mental illnesses like depression present in Japan. But let's go through this step by step. According to a BBC News article from the 16th December 2020, Takahiro would use Twitter to lure suicidal women to his apartment. It is fairly easy to abuse women who are in a mentally unstable state and he would use this to his advantage. He would promise them that he will help them to die and, in some cases, claims that he would take his own life alongside them. Between August and October 2017, he would strangle and dismember eight women and one man aged between 15 to 26. The Straits Times news article, also from the 16th December, is being updated very frequently and goes much more in depth about the victims. Now it's not only about strangling and dismembering his victims, but also includes drugging and raping them. The procedure was as follows. He would use two Twitter accounts to contact his victims. On the first one, he posed as someone who is able to help others to take their own lives. In the second one, he acted as a vulnerable person looking for company for his misery. He looked out for others who may be interested in joining a suicide pact. This account seems to be from him. It contains only one tweet, which translated reads as, it's a restart. The picture shown here speaks volumes. I don't think I really need to comment this. There's also an archive available from his first account, only labeled as Hanging Pro. It's mostly him just retweeting pictures of cats. If you want to take a closer look, I'll link the archive down below. It appears relatively mild, but I might delete it later. He would arrange meetings with his victims at a train station near their home, only to travel to his apartment after. There, he fed them alcohol, tranquilizers and sleeping pills before assaulting and raping them. He killed his first victim for financial reasons. She wanted him to return alone. Now obviously, if you dismember someone, you want to get rid of the remains to not leave any evidence or trace behind. Takahiro took a different approach. He would store 9 human heads and 240 bones in cooler boxes in his apartment. Mainichi Shimbun created a layout of the suspect's apartment. There were multiple boxes in the room and contained the remains of his victims. Ever since, the house has been labeled as House of Horrors by Japanese media. You may ask, why did he kill 8 women and only one man? Was it just a coincidence? Well, this also has its backstory. The man was an acquaintance of one of the missing women. The man actually became somewhat close discovering Takahiro's crimes which forced him to act. How was he caught? Well, the brother of the final and last victim managed to hack into the last victim's Twitter account, finding their conversation. Anyway, the trial itself is also fairly interesting and gives us some insight into Takahiro's perspective. Takahiro's defendant stated that the murders were consensual since they wanted to die and Takahiro just helped them out. This was not a very successful attempt since Takahiro was found guilty on all charges. The judge states, quote, All the murders were well planned and the modus operandi makes it one of the most malicious murders ever in the history of crime. It caused massive shock and anxiety to a society where the use of social media is commonplace. Takahiro doesn't really seem to care about this case at all. He would even complain in media interviews that the process is taking too long and that he would gladly accept the death penalty. During trial, he would apologize to the family, quote, I'm sorry for having killed some of the victims with whom I spent a lot of time and would like to apologize to these families. This apology is far from sincere since it continues with the following, quote, but for the others, I don't really feel a deep sense of regret. In any case, I'm sorry only because I failed when I got caught. If I wasn't arrested, I will not be regretting anything. In another police investigation, he shared his thoughts on his own procedure, quote, there is no doubt that I sliced up the bodies in my bathroom with the intention of destroying evidence. He once told police investigators, I disposed of their flesh and internal organs like garbage, but kept their bones out of fear that I would be caught. He even went against his own lawyers, stating, quote, I killed them for financial reasons and to satisfy my sexual desires. There was no consent. 
I don't know if giving Takahiro the death penalty that he desires is such a good solution. It seems like an easy way out and Takahiro is completely fine with this decision. One of the father's victims states, quote, the death penalty is a valid decision but personally I wanted him to get a life sentence which he has no choice but to atone for his wrongdoings, rather than give him the death penalty he wanted. Anyways, there obviously is a lot more info available, especially the Japan Times covered a lot regarding this case. If you want to go a bit more in depth, I'll provide you with a paste bin containing everything used for this video and further reading. I know this video is somewhat untypical for my channel, but I wrote a post about this yesterday. Point being, internet mysteries and overall interesting mysteries are very rare at the moment, thus I need to expand the topics I cover in videos. When I decide to cover true crime or anything else, I'll try to make it distinct from other channels and only cover the most interesting and recent cases. I'll still upload internet mysteries as usual, but there's only so much to cover. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and if so, I'd really appreciate a sub, a rating and let me know what you think of this case down below. I'll see you guys next week with an internet mystery that I've been working on for a while now.